Alright, hey, what's up everyone? So today we have uh, 11 DN games that I did. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to Terra Bubbles because Timmy is awesome and Timmy is good. Um, <laughs> I hope he wins nationals this year in New Zealand and that's where he's from. And he's just overall extremely good player. He plays cards that people wouldn't expect. Like, he told me for San Diego day two yeah he told me to uh, he told me the cards to run and I just didn't play in a while so that's why I didn't do that as well but I'll talk about that later anyway let's get into these games I was going to give some some great insight on how I play my games but I would say that this first game right now I'm playing Yados and I'm against a Mermail Atlantean deck and honestly there's no skill to this I mean if you look at this I could easily lose to Heavy or Dark Hole at any point in the game, and I'm just really, really, really got away with a lot of plays. Uh, as you can see, he didn't have another MST, he didn't have another Heavy, I mean, I had everything. All six cards were, like, perfect for his hand. And that's the thing about Iados, it's only good against people who, who are so reliant on the graveyard that their whole deck is dead by one card. And that's pretty much what Macro does, it shuts down the deck just by itself. And, you know, looking at this game, in hindsight, I, I really, I shouldn't be playing this anymore. Uh, it's like, it's like, you know, you look at your hand, it's like, look at all these dead banishers and macros, and, you know, once a card hits the graveyard, a monster hits the graveyard, all three Yadoses are dead unless you draw Reborn. And even if you draw Reborn, he can just torrential it away and, you know, you lost from there. Okay, now this game, this game, I played a lot different. I did not know he was going to heavy first turn. I was actually planning on just specialing everything and just setting. But I figure, you know, you do that two games in a row, you're bound to get punished for it. And the thing is, you really have to consider, you know, you have to consider the odds, but you also have to consider, like, what do you think he has? You can't just go like, oh, there's a 10% chance he's going to have the... You know, he's going to have a 10% chance to have the rabbit, and then he's like, there's no way he'll draw the rabbit. Well, if you say that, then, if you say that it will never happen, it'll always happen. I've learned that. Like, if you say there's no way you're going to win this game, and the game isn't completely decided yet, there's probably a good chance you're going to lose the game. And that's why you just don't say that. I mean, of course, in the DN setting, you get to play as casually as you want. A lot of people, that's why they don't care if they lose to Starlight Road, because they're like, oh, whatever, you know, it's just, it's just a game, and you're not playing for YCS or anything, so I can play however I want. You can play Sloppy, you know, and Sloppy plays, that happened a lot in this game. So, here I'm playing against Dark World, and quite honestly, I don't even know what to say. This guy made ridiculous amounts of misplays, and you'll see right now. Um, you, as you can see, he does Reckless Greed, and I go Evil Swim Thunderbird, and I swing for 1650. Puts him at 3750. And then he skips his draw phase and then goes Legacy and Reckless. So he didn't even go end phase Reckless to get a free uh, one less draw phase skip. And that's just that's just really bad on his part. I, I don't know what people are thinking when they make these plays. But that's just that's just bad. Alright, so here he doesn't draw a monster. So I get another swing for 50, for 1650 again with my Thunderbird, and I don't know if you guys see this, but I have a mem uh, adversary. I don't know the card's name. It's like Memory of an Adversary or something. Maybe I'll, I'll scroll on it. Uh, and what it does is when your opponent's monster attacks, I can take damage equal to the attack of the monster attacking, and then I banish that monster like D Prison. But on the next end phase, I get special summon to my side of the field on their next end phase, so it's actually a really good card, but, uh, I don't know. I have issues with that card, I guess, taking so much damage, you know? I know, when Solemn Warning was at 3, I never ran 3. It's just way too many, I mean, go down to 2,000 so fast. But Solemn Judgment's different. Solemn Judgment, that card, you need to play 3 of. I remember that card just stops everything. Solemn Warning doesn't stop everything, and... I don't know, I just have different, I have differences with warning than I do with judgment. So here, oh by the way, the, the this deck was also co-built by Timmy as well. That's why I gave a nice big shout out to him. 
He's like one of the few people I still talk to about this game. I don't really talk to many people about this game. I try to reach out to players, but I'm busy, they're busy. You know, how are we supposed to talk to each other? I don't know how people have time for this game all the time. I mean, there's money coming in somewhere. I mean, you gotta dedicate a lot of your time to making money. Um, and then as you can see, he goes reborn right here. He has a beige and he autos that he reborn. And he didn't attack because he thought I had Mirror Force. Well, the thing is, if you think I have Mirror Force, you're just going to have to risk it, I think. Oh, and by the way, I haven't been even talking about the game, I'm sorry. Um, he did uh, the same mistake two times or three times with not drawing for Reckless Greed, and now he's doing Snow. And I believe the Bottomless and Deep Prison happened. Yeah, Bottomless and Deep Prison. I got rid of all three of his Graphas. He got rid of his own Grapha with Gates, so I don't know what's up with that. So this turn, he decides to attack into the Mirror Force. I, I don't understand these people's mindsets. I really don't. I mean, I always say, this is DN, typical DN. And, you know, you're right. And... I've been trying to keep up with this game, but th there's some things I want to talk about, too. Which I shouldn't be talking about because I want to be focusing on this match and giving my insight. Alright, here I have Dinah and Macro, and he has a Snow with 2000. So what I decided to do is summon Dinah, and, and I was going to overlay and go for game. And I know I have the Bribe face down, which... You know, I, I view it a little bit as a misplay, but at the same time, I felt like his other back rows were relevant at the time, so I think I made the right play there. You know, I, I don't know. I, I It's arguable, but I already made the play, and this is just hindsight now. And now I did mem Memory of an Adversary, and I took his tour guide, so he's going to lose if he doesn't draw a monster next turn. But anyway, I just grabbed the Guayaba, I have the Bribe face down, grabbed the Torrential, and now if he doesn't have another card, then it's game over. So he ends up scooping that game. Awesome. I and let's go to the next game. Let's see, the next game is going to be against Bubble Man Hero. Um, this deck is in... Bubble Hero is so fast. I thought they were going to ban Stratos, that one ban list. And they hardly even touched heroes, so I was surprised. That one ban list, I'm not even specific enough. I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I think this game was okay. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Slap Yodos down, Slap Banisher down. Oh, I love those plays back in the past. Uh, you know I miss when Heavy was banned. That was the best. Now that Heavy's allowed, there's just so much luck factor now. I mean, there's always the argument, um, Heavy versus no Heavy, because... With heavy ban, everyone just summons Thunder King set 5. Well, that's okay. It's better than Lagia set 5. Wait, that's what people would start doing, but you know what? They should have touched Rabbit, too. Okay, I'm just complaining, though. <laughs> but what I actually want to do is get my second top with the autos. I'll be the only person in Yu-Gi-Oh! history to top with the autos two times in a row. Um, here, I go Phoenix Chain on Stratos, and then I draw, and I swing over Stratos and tackle Banisher. And then I don't know why I'm not sending Phoenix Chain away. I must have not realized it. And then I go attack with Banisher, attack with the autos. Is this guy just going to scoop or what? Let's see. I think this guy's actually going to come back. Oh, he goes Heavy Storm, and he had like two called the Haunted's face down. They were all dead. But here, he actually makes a good play, and... You know, normally people don't make good plays on DN, so I got a little surprised on this one. He, um, he special summons Bubble Man, right? And then he goes Rhoda, he gets his alias or whatever, and he makes the XYZ, uh, Hero Champions Excalibur. Well, I'm going way too fast. And this thing's speeded up to, like, 250%, so... You know, I'm trying to keep up with this and talk at the same time. So, okay, here comes Hero Champion. And then he goes, attack over the Banisher. I mean, I guess it's not really a good play, it's just decent. Alright, and then he goes main phase 2, detach to make it 4,000, and then he goes, flip up his face down, Miracle Fusion. Well, that was actually... I like that play a lot. So here, obviously I'm in a bad spot, I need to draw something, I draw Deep Prison. Well, perfect, Deep Prison, get rid of the, the Shining, and then Fossil Dina pop his other card and Guava for game, right? 
I hope that plays out like that. that that's what I was thinking in my mind. I guess it's a pretty s simple step-by-step -step process, this deck at least. It's just the deck construction that's really difficult, because, you know, there's like nothing good with macro, and besides rabbit, but I want to make a rabbit and macro deck, the same thing. Alright, here we go. The next game is uh, my Switch decks to Frog Monarchs. Uh, this is actually a different recording session against, now I'm against Six Samurai. And look, we keep tying, we keep tying, and then nope, I lost. So he goes first. Let's see. That opening hand is not very good. Let's see what he opens up with. Gateway. Uh oh. That's not good. Well then, <laughs> I guess it's time for me to scoop up my cards, right? <laughs> oh man, I hate this deck so much. <laughs> I remember one Morales, and I tried to play against Six Samurais on YouTube, and I just lost real bad. I, you know, I remember when Gateway was at 3 and I won a thousand dollar tournament at, uh, at Anaheim while YCS Dallas was going on. That was, that was an amazing event. And let's see, he's just gonna just special, 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 special. Uh, I hate Six Samurai so much. Well, I just, you know, out of this deck, probably only Gateway I hate. This gateway is just the whoa, you just plus 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 plus. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look, he has two level threes. Rank three. Wow. Um, and I haven't decided if I was gonna get back into the game really. I'm okay, so I go MST. And then I was I was like, I know he's gonna negate this one. I mean, he has to. He negates. I go set treeborn. I go econ. Take that. <laughs> then I go econ. Take that. That that. I. I mean, my thought process there was, I have to get rid of his monsters, or I'm gonna lose. That was my thought process. If he had any six samurai right now, I probably would have lost for sure right now. And I was thinking I was gonna lose anyway, so I. I was just getting rid. Just getting rid of the field. I, I don't know if that was really a good play or not, but I just tried. So he has a six samurai. I think I lose right now. But, you know, I just want to see what my draw is before I scoop. Man, I hate this deck. Can't outplay Gateway. I always like. I'm always ready to outplay people, but when they have cards like Gateway existing, can't outplay them. Alright, so I take 25, right? And then he synchros for Ancient Fairy Dragon. I was really surprised. I'm like, why didn't he summon Landoys? I was thinking he didn't run it, or whatever, for some reason. So I Kaias his gateway away, because that was the only card I was going to lose to, right? And then he takes a thousand life points. I'm like, really? It's not a dark... I think Gateway's a dark. It's a dark card. You don't want to get around that card. <laughs> okay, but next, it looks like he's not really putting up a fight. I think I would have switched my Zen mains to attack mode and then swing into it. But he summons Sheehan Squire, which is a tuner, I guess, and then makes a level 8. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. He's Stardust. I take 100. <laughs> <laughs> they top deck Ryza. So I was like, okay, I'll just try and come back. Oh, and then he bottles me. <laughs> anyway, I'm just... I don't know what I'm gonna do here. All I have is Baylor. I was gonna make Slacker Magician, and then... He summons Kaigeki... Specials... Elder... I didn't negate with Baylor because obviously it's just a waste to do that. And I can't be wasting cards. But then he makes Acid Golem. So then I saw a window of opportunity for me. I really thought I could come back now, and I summon the Veiler, and I make the Slacker Magician, because I'm like, okay, this thing can't be destroyed by about a once per turn, and Acid Golem, that's the only one I can get over it, so it's just gonna stay there and just 
live, and Zen Main's not going to do anything, and then he has to keep detaching and taking 2,000, so he's on actually a, a 4 or 5 turn limit, I think 5. So I draw Duality, and I'm just searching for something, and I got Thestalos, and I'm like, okay, now, now I'm coming back. So I go Soul Exchange, and I tribute his Zen Mains to summon Thestalos. I know I'm like 900, but I can live with 300 if he attacks over. And then he goes, she and Smoke Signal, and then, oh, he forgets to detach or pay. And so he's like, let me search first. And I'm like, uh, in my head, I'm like, that's not how it works, but okay. He searches the Kaigeki, and he detaches. So because he did that, he can't attack now. So I was like, alright, this guy made several misplays this game, and he opened Gateway, and that's just how it goes. I gotta win this game. So I was like, now, now, I draw Light and Dark Mist Dragon. And I'm like, oh dang, let the winning begin. <laughs> because at any point now, I can lose to Dark Hole plus any monster. So I really have to, I, I ended up attacking his face down, and it was Kageki. And then I double sack for Light and Darkness set, because he doesn't know. Of course, I would assume it's like, he probably thinks it's Tragodia or something like that. But now he's down to 4,000. And I am i don't know what I'm doing here. I'm pretty much just wasting time. I should have just passed turn for both both turns, but I didn't do that. I ended up going for the attack. Uh, attack for game, because I like doing that. I don't like to win by... Uh, only in only in uh, YCS and you know tournaments. I like winning like anyway. Anyway, except cheating. That is, I don't like cheaters. Peter Chang, no. Cheater Peng, <laughs> and then he goes deep prison, and then it's game. So now game five, I I'm using Frog Monarchs for the rest of the matches now. And game five, I'm against Insectors. Wow, Insectors. Insectors, we go back. I lost to Insectors at YCS, uh, Chicago, and it was like the last, it was the last few rounds before the top 32, and just, I'm, I was sad that I lost. It was my third loss. Okay. Alright, that game is really self-explanatory, so I'm actually going to talk about something else. I'll be posting a lot more content for you guys. Uh, a lot more DN videos, because th this is actually really easy. I got my friend to help me uh, edit this, and I really like the way it turned out. As you can see, it's nice and speeded up, and everything worked out the way it was supposed to. Um, so, I actually might attend Nationals this year at Chicago. Um... I might do some other things. I want to actually say something uh, for you guys like wondering uh, about sponsorship and all that with me. I'm not sponsored right now with ARG. I'm just just whatever right now. Um, you know, I I'm working full time, so it's not like I really really need the sponsorship right now. I'm like before, um, cause I I would really like it. But I need to be interested in the game first. And it's hard for me to be interested, like, as a competitive player, because they don't do anything for the competitive scene. They they give horrible prizes out, you know, and the people who play aren't exactly, you know, I, if you guys been to your locals, you know what I'm talking about. They're not exactly the best hygiene, and they're not exactly the best smelling. Like, some people do not know how to take care of themselves. <laughs> Uh, who knows, I might join ARG again, it depends if I get interested in the game. It's just, it's just hard to be interested because this is, this is not very, not my primary interest. My primary interest, I love volunteering, I love helping, uh, helping the community out in any way I can. Whether it comes to picking up trash, I mean, it's one of my least favorite things to do, but I mean, I like, um, I like giving out food to the homeless. And just volunteering for my church and just anything I can do to give my time away like that. 
because it's just so important to do that. Well, it's important to give yourself away rather than to get things for yourself. I mean, people are so full of themselves right now, and and like you know, I can always date this back to Yu-Gi-Oh players. If you guys check out your locals, I bet you over half the people in there are out there to plus off you. And I understand there's businesses and stuff, and I understand you know cards and everything. How you're just trading to make a few mon a few dollars, but there's some people that are seriously just out there to steal your stuff. But that's how it's like here in California. I, I don't know why um, Jose Suarez has not got banned yet. Uh, I'm not trying to boycott on him or anything. It's just he's st stolen and he has judge friends to help him steal. So it's, it's just crazy how corrupt it is. I mean. I guess uh, those judges are getting cards as well when he steals. And you know, I, I don't like to bring like the sad news or anything, but that's just how it is. Another thing I don't really like about Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is, no matter how good you play, there's always that that luck factor, that like, that draw w auto win card, like Gateway. God, I hate Gateway so much. <laughs> Uh, oh, I should have narrated this game. Yeah, I, I just started, like, talking about other things. It's just, I've never talked so much in a video before. 45 minutes? That's how long this video is. Holy cow, we're, we're not even halfway done yet. <laughs> I'm also in the middle of getting my driver's license. It's such a pain. And the DMV is closing soon where I live, so it's going to be even harder to get my license. Uh California. Gotta love California, right? The only thing that's nice is that I get to save money on all the all the um the gas money. There we go. Yeah. That's funny. We're not even talking about Yu-Gi-Oh right now. What game is this? Oh, this is still the Oh, this is Chaos Dragon game 6 purple. Okay, let's see. Enemy controller? Okay, I was in a bad spot right here. Took the light pulsar. Okay, I see. I'm gonna sack Rodin Toad in. Okay, here's the misplay I made here. What I should have done was I should have been able to bring back Treeborn Frog during that same standby phase. That was... I think that was a big misplay on my part. I, I really... I can't believe I did that. And then I went draw phase Maxi. <laughs> And then I negated with Photon and Strike Bouncer. So he now he's at 1700. And I got the Econ for game. So no matter what he does, I have enemy controller, you know? He special summons the Sorcerer. And then I draw Reborn. So that really ensures victory now. Because now I have the Treeborn enemy controller and a Reborn follow up for if he had anything. And then look, I draw Line Darkness to win more. <laughs> then he just scoops and leaves. Alright, now let's get to this. Uh, my frogs against his Dragoonity. A lot of different decks I'm playing against. There's like every single deck was a different deck. Eleven different decks. That's that's crazy. So I think I'm in a special. And then I normal summon Swap Frog. Yeah. This is awesome. Gotcha, gotcha. First turn. Okay, I'm not going to really give my insight this time. On uh, these games, because really, there's nothing really insightful about these games. They're just random games on DN. When um, I play against someone like Dalton Bozeman or something, or Mike Steinman, or you know, anyone better than average, <laughs> then I'll actually uh, narrate what my thought process and what I think he's he or she is thinking can't forget that girls are also good too. I actually saw a girl YouTube channel uh, called Team JJ, and they're from Southern California and they're actually pretty decent players. And they look like they're having a lot of fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's just, it's heartwarming to see that people are actually having fun playing this game because I don't see very many people having fun. You know, people are like in it to win it, people are so desperate and trying to cheat all the time and, you know, that's how it is. 
Sack for Ryza, pop his ravine back. I have the Valor for his, um... Okay, so here, I'm going to talk about something really important. He, I did not Valor here on his Legionnaire, and it really looks bad, but I have an explanation. And, you know, it's actually not that good of an explanation, but here we go. Alright, I didn't Valor because I save all my Valors for their 4-star guy, which is... What's his name? Dragoonity... Ducks. But, uh, since he didn't play Ducks, I thought it was, un you know, unnecessary to do so. And so, look, I can just, like, build up my defenses while I wait, I sit and wait for a Monarch, and plus I have enemy controller for when he plays more cards down. So, he's gonna just burn more cards up, and have my defenses up. Alright, he, uh, goes Ravine, discards Breakthrough Skill, which, that's really, really powerful in that deck. Alright, and then he's gonna, like, send Dragoonity Arm Leviathan, Arma. I don't even think that card's that good. I thought about running it the first time Dragonities came out, and I couldn't run it. It wasn't good enough. Yeah, me and me and a friend, we always say, like, is that good enough? 7 out of 10? 8 out of 10? Like, you know how you rate girls? <laughs> That's how we kind of do it with Yu-Gi-Oh cards, too, although we're not attracted to the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We're attracted to the ladies. You know, gotta get those girls. I don't really talk to anyone right now. Well, I only keep close uh, contact or with my close friends and family, and that's it. I'm really, really quiet right now. Just because I'm just fixing my life up. Gotta get that driver's license. Alright, now, his last final card is Monster Reborn. And I thought I was going to lose because I thought he was going to summon, um... I thought he was going to go... Alright, with this Phalanx that he's bringing back, I thought he was going to go for, uh... That six-star guy, and then bring the Phalanx back, and then special the Phalanx, and then sync with his two Legionnaires for eight. Or, I thought he was going to go, like, make, uh... That one card, Tem Tempo, with the Legionnaires, and then make an eight-star, like, Scrap Dragon, and just go all out on everything, and then... Okay, well, it doesn't matter what I think because I had enemy controller for game, so... Or Dark Hole or whatever. I, I... You know, he... If you don't have game, you shouldn't waste all of your cards. That, that's the lesson here in this match. You really... Some people just gotta learn. I mean, I can teach you guys, not from my plays, but their plays. My plays are pretty much just... Oh, and TCG Pirate Weevil... Uh, Weasel? Weevil? What am I talking about? <laughs> He's always making fun of me. And... And we're always talking, I guess, on DN. Not always, but just... One day I just went on and started talking to him. He's pretty nice. Pretty good player. He's known as the Worm King, but I thought Robbie Boyajin was the, the Worm King. I guess not. Oh, and here he um, he tries to go breakthrough skill, and then remembers that he just discarded this turn. So don't know what's up with that. But he swings at Slacker Magician, and Slacker Magician can't be destroyed once per, per turn. And then he swings over that, and then I draw Caius. So I'm like, okay, I'll just Dark Hole, <laughs> destroy everything. And I still need to get rid of Ravine because he's going to summon ducks if I don't get rid of it. So I banish the swap frog, especially summon Rodent Toad, sack for Caius, and banish that. And now he has nothing. So now he needs to top deck ducks or scoop his cards up. Scoopy doopy up. <laughs> That's exactly what he does. Alright, this game. This game. Wow. I, this game is really long, so just be ready. Look at my hand. What am I supposed to do? And he's running frogs. I know this is bad news bears for me. He goes duality, and look what he does. He grabs Caius. So, whew. I don't know what I'm going to do here. So I draw foolish, and I'm like, oh, thank God. Yes, foolish. so many memories about this game that I still don't know if I did anything wrong. But as I'm watching this, 
I'll, I'll learn, you'll learn, we'll all learn something from this game. We all learn not to play it. <laughs> so he goes Pot of Duality again. And this time he gets enemy controller, right? Yep. Well, it sucks for me because now I can't do anything. <sighs> he sets one to the back row. I believe. Yes. My go. Now, I skip my Treeborn Frog because so I can activate Duality. And I get a Thessalos. I think Reborn was the better choice. I think Reborn was the better choice. Only in hindsight, though. Yeah, Reborn was the better choice. Oh well, that's fine. Because the thing is, I could have summoned a Monarch and then Reborn a Monarch from either player's graveyard. And then me Photon Strike Bouncer would have been an awesome position to win the game. Wait, am I insinuating that I'm going to lose this game in a dark way? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. So here, I'm really hoping to just discard something good, like Caius. And I go for his card, and it's Swap Frog. No! Then he econs, so I was like, yes. And I'm thinking he's going to Caius right now, because... Pretty good play. Pretty good play. Pretty standard old school play. Yep, Hikaya. So now I'm down to 34. Oh. Wow. Dark Dust Spirit. This deck list is only like three cards different than his, probably. Because I, I, I value the Stalos very high in my deck. Um, people, when they play against Frog Monarchs, they're like, Oh, we need to not set anything or anything like that, you know. So let's see, I sack for Caius. Boom. So let's see, now he's at 44. And then my thought process here is I need to set enemy controller because I thought he had an enemy controller in his hand. And I thought he was just going to take that and then uh, sack for another thing and attack for game. And pff, I don't know what I was thinking. I really did not have to set the enemy controller there. Um, if I didn't set it, I probably would have been in a better spot. Honestly. Yeah, so. It goes Dark Dust Spirit attack. It would have been nice because I, I would have just discarded Heavy Storm out of my hand um, during my end phase because I, I don't need it. But it's all good, it's all good. The, the reason why also I set enemy control is because I was so low on life points and he had six cards in hand. And I just feel like everyone always has everything but I guess he didn't have it that time. Um, now he has two monsters in the field so I think like darkness is coming down. No, 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 it's not because I have Treeborn. Yeah, you can keep bringing back Treeborn Frog and Light and Darkness goes down to 800. And wow, things are looking so bad, aren't they? <laughs> well, I need Field Presence, so instead of Dark Dust Spirit, I actually summon Ryza this time. Makes sense, right? And he has a Ronin Toad in, I see that in his graveyard. Not good for me. Is, look, I'm at 1200. How am I supposed to come out of this? I know he has Dark Dust Spirit in hand, and that's what I have the Veiler for, but I'm not really prepared for what's coming next turn. See, the problem with being so low on life points is, like, you can lose to anything, any random card you're not prepared for. And then, the, you know, they also add Gaga Ga, Ga Cowboy to this game, which makes it even more relevant to be over 2000 life points at all times in order to win games. You know, when Dark Strike Fighter was allowed, it's not even good good to be under 3,000. <laughs> That's how it was like in Dark Strike format. 
And then I kind of chose for Valor not to wear off. I kind of chose Dark Dust Spirit first, and then Valor wears off afterwards. You get to decide how it works when you're the Valor player. Uh, just for future reference for you guys. Alright, here I drew Tree Born Frog. So I swing over that. I summon the Tree Born, and then I make Slacker Magician with that. So I thought, okay, I'm in a good spot now. Even though I'm low life points. But we'll just see what he does right now. I mean, there's so many issues right now because I have, let's see, one, two, th I have Dark Hole's pretty dead. That's three dead cards I have in my hand. And then he sacks for LADD, and I do not have a tree board now in Grave because I used it for Slacker Magician. So, what am I supposed to do? I was thinking about setting the MST down. I really thought about it for a long time. And then I'm finally like, you know what? I can't afford I can't afford that mistake if I make it. So I kind of just pass turn. Just hoping he doesn't have anything. And then I draw Gores, and I'm like, okay, now I'm forced to set MST. So what I was going to do now is I need to set myself up to where he can't kill the Slacker Magician. I just need to just sit on this card until I draw an L or something. I and then he sacks for Jinzo, and I'm like, okay, that doesn't affect me. I draw a Treeborn, and I'm like, okay, I need to set up my Treeborn, so I'm going to Heavy, obviously Negate, Dark Hole, and then I chain MST to Dark Hole, because, so I can have an, you know, so I can have an open field for Treeborn to come back next turn. And I thought, alright, that was the, that was the better play. But what I didn't take into account is the one card that has trampling, which would be uh, Dragoon. Gaia Dragoon. Oh, I did not think of that card. While I was thinking about all of my possible plays, I didn't consider it. So, he continues to bring Tree Ward Frog back with LED out. And remember, like it said before, you can bring it back and then it has no more negating. Once it goes down to 400 defense, it can no longer negate. Unless you increase the attack up somehow. Or defense up somehow. You know, like if you went United, we stand on Light and Darkness Dragon. After it's already negated. Ooh, that'd have a lot of attack, wouldn't it? <laughs> Alright. Cheeborn comes back. And then, yeah, he makes a weird play, but it doesn't matter. He Ryza, he summons, he's going to summon Ryza right now. And then he bounces his own card back when he should have bounced my face down. Oh, never mind, never mind. Never mind, I'm dumb. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to make this play. Uh, he makes Constellar. I should have ran that in my extra deck. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. See, I don't, I don't play this game enough. Then here comes the big scary guy at Dragoon, and he oh he's just this is irrelevant, whatever, he's uh light darkness back to his hand, whatever. Oh, I should have cutted this out. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Emo cut. Slash. This is really boring, I'm really sorry you guys. It it'll be way funner next time. This is just my first time doing this. So, just keep in mind that this is my first time doing this, and I'm just trying my best. No, I'm not trying my best. No, no, no. I'm not trying my best. I'm trying my average. <laughs> this match I'm against, obviously, Gladiator Beast. And there's two more games after this. Let's see what happens. Wabaku. Wabaku happens. Um, He goes... I guess two GBs. Alright, here's the thing. I don't think there's any way he was going to win this game. And he just scoops it. Now I'm against Evil Swarm. Evil Swarm Dino Variant. At least that's what I have written down right here. 
the famous Corn Monarch player, uh, or Corn Monarch play is Soul Exchange to Stall is always a plus one. And I know that Adam Corn likes plusing a lot. He's always plusing at Frankenzons. <laughs> Alright, so he's Guaiba, and I drew Heavy, and I'm not going to special tree board back because I, I read Torrential down there somewhere. I know Torrential's down there. So I go Heavy, and he's got Solemn Judgment. That's fine. Attack for game. Game. Alright, one more game. This game is going to be about 5 minutes sped up. It was like 10 minutes not sped up. Like, without editing this, it would be an hour and 55 minutes long. So, that's a really long time. It's a really long time. <laughs> uh, that hand is horrible. Typhoon. Uh, my favorite thing to say is, uh, heavy no follow-up, and I actually did that last game, uh, against... Gladiator Beast, I did the heavy no follow up. And the reason I did the heavy no follow up, why am I talking about this now? Is because I did not want to deal with War Chariot so I can successfully summon Battle Fader. Okay, that's that's all I wanted to talk about for that game to justify any misplay uh, you think I had. And here I right hear, I go Caius's Jane because with JD, Judgment Dragon, you need four different Light Swarms of different names. And in that deck, you only run one Jane. So by banishing it, it really hurts them for different names. Uh, just so you, you guys know that for future references. Always banish their one-ofs. They run three Luminas, two to three Raikos. Sometimes people only run one Raiko, but, you know, gotta be ready for that. Cycle so Soul Exchange, and I get rid of his Gores for Ryza to get rid of his token. So now I have, I'm back in field control. And let's see. He's gonna go recharge. He discards Wolf. So now he has three names, because he just discarded Illumina off the top of his deck. Illumina, Raikou, Wolf. He needs one more Light Sworn to go off. Well, what am I going to do about that? I got Dark Hole, but I'm at 35. He just has to go JD. Oh, I have Valor too. He has to go JD and another monster for game. He can go double JD. I lost my feature match in... YCS to a Light Sworn deck. He went three JDs on me when I was running Yados. So now I tribute for Thestalos. And I discard out of his hand a Heavy Storm, which was completely horrible. I kill a Geroth in battle. Now I'm nervous because I was reading Force Focus and I'm like, oh, this card's okay, I guess. And I just decided to summon Photon Strike Bouncer instead in past turn. And then I go draw phase Maxi because I know I need to just do something. If I don't do anything, he's just going to summon everything for game. Alright, so here's the moment of truth. Does he have game or not? He goes to Breed Dragon. And I could Veil it or Photon, and I'm like, nah, that's fine. I let him summon the Trooper back, so I draw one for Maxi. And now he's going to Synchro for Black Rose. And I draw one, and I choose to negate because I don't want to lose the Photon Strike Bouncer. And now he's at 22, with 35. Yeah, he can just summon BLS, or... That's what he's going to do, he's going to summon BLS. I draw one. That would be game, but I remembered I did have Valor in hand. You know, I hate forgetting when I have Valor in my hand. I don't run Valor at Maxi very often. I think hand traps are a little... Bleh. I draw Soul Exchange, and I'm like, well, I need to go for game right now, because he has BLS. Alright, and then I end my main phase. He's got Valor. Oh, look, Timmy's watching. And then I sack BLS for Caius, Spanish his monster. And then attack for game. So there we go. I went 10 and 1. And I want to thank you guys for watching and subscribe.
rate, comment, and leave it as a favorite if you really liked it, and I'll have plenty of more content later on. Peace out, YouTube.